This is a portable reel-to-reel tape recorder. It was released in 1968, aimed at the consumer market. Even though it says North American, it was actually made in Japan. I bought this one at a thrift store, and I was never able to try it out because I never had any tape that would work with it. That is, until today. This just arrived in the mail. When I ordered this, I thought I was buying the right size. The smallest size reel that Ampex made, but the spindles on this recorder are even smaller. We're going to have to get old school and do some manual spooling. My fascination with this particular machine is partly nostalgic. Not so much my own nostalgia, because I wasn't born yet in 1968. But like a lot of kids who grew up in the 80s, I did have access to a tape recorder. This is what mine looked like. I spent hours recording my own voice on this thing, mostly pretending to be a radio announcer. It was a little magical, but also very frustrating. The recordings it made were awful. There was hiss, tape distortion, and when the batteries were low, the speed would fluctuate. Anyway, this consumer reel-to-reel is a precursor to that, so I'm very eager to hear how it sounds. Before we try it out, let's do a proper unboxing. As you can see, it boasts that it has not one, not two, but six transistors inside. To put that in perspective, The latest iPhone CPU has 15 billion transistors in it. Still, this was the 60s, and transistors had only recently hit the mass market. It must have been very exciting to have so many cheap devices that didn't need costly breakable vacuum tubes. What else? Oh, it runs on a weird combination of batteries. One 9 volt and two C batteries. While I was waiting for this tape to arrive, I opened it up. This is what the inside looks like. I sprayed contact cleaner on all of the connections. I don't know if that actually does anything. I really just do that out of superstition. Okay, let's get on with it. As you can see, it comes with a cute little microphone. Okay, let's give this a shot. This is a test. This is a test. works. I can't believe it works. Okay, now let's plug it into an external output so that we can record some stuff with it. Okay, let's try feeding some music through it. So I've got this little piano loop here in Ableton Live. I'm going to go hit record on the reel-to-reel, and I'm going to hit play in Ableton Live. Let's hear how that sounds when we play it back from the tape. Okay, not bad. The background noise is obviously substantial, but the overall sound is pretty pleasant. I'm going to use a piece of software called Isotope RX to do some noise reduction. Luckily, I have good recording of the tape hiss, so all I have to do is teach RX what the tape hiss sounds like by selecting the portion of audio that contains the hiss and clicking Learn. Then I click the Render button, and most of the noise will get removed. Okay, let's hear it again. Okay, not bad. Because this is battery operated, and because it probably hasn't been used for about 30 years, the speed of the motor is somewhat unstable. This, of course, means that the pitch is somewhat unstable too, which is giving this recording that characteristic tape warble. That sound is obviously used everywhere nowadays as an effect. There are tons of plugins that simulate that sound. Anyway, let's forge ahead. My overall goal at this point is to try to use this as an effect. In fact, I want to try to make an entire piano sample library using this device. As it happens, I've actually got many piano sample libraries on my hard drive that I've recorded for various different projects. All I have to do is run one of them through this recorder, and I should end up with a nice, warbly, characterful piano sample. Now, piano sample libraries vary greatly in size. Uh, They can have anywhere from a single recording of a single note all the way up to thousands of recordings. Because I don't have much tape and I don't know how long the batteries are going to last, I've chosen a very small one that only has 10 notes. As you can see, I've opened up Reaper, and I put all the WAV files that make up this sample library on the timeline. 
Next, I'm going to hit record on the tape player. Then I'm going to hit play back on the computer. And it's going to play them back one after another into the tape recorder. I won't make you watch this in real time. Okay, we've recorded the audio into the tape player. Now let's do the same thing, but in reverse. I'm making a new track here in Reaper, and what we're going to do is we're going to play back from the tape player into the computer. As you can see, again, there is a ton of noise. So again, we're going to do that same noise reduction that we did earlier. Another thing is the tape playback speed is really variable. As you can see, the different hits, which should, in theory, line up perfectly with the original source material, don't line up at all. This also means they're going to have slightly different pitches than they should have. I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to play with the audio speed so that they line up. In theory, that should get us too close to the original pitch. Okay, I think we're finally ready to export. So now, in choosing a piano sample to work with, I picked one that I already had a decent sampler preset for. So in theory, all I need to do is take the new audio files, drop them into the samples directory, and overwrite the old ones, and it should just load up. You'll notice I've also taken the time to make new artwork for this library in anticipation of this very moment. Not bad. Okay, let's make some music. The characteristic warble of a cheap tape player that's low on batteries is a beautiful, lonely sound that gets used as an intentional effect a lot these days. As someone who spent my childhood longing to be free of the limitations of this technology, it can feel strange to see it romanticized. But I guess it all comes down to choice. Back in the day, devices like these were all I had to record on, and it was almost impossible not to want something better. But now? We live in a time where we have many, many options for recording sound, almost all of which offer a crystal clear sound quality. I think it's only now, with this embarrassment of choices, that I can really appreciate the beauty of those imperfect tape sounds. The sample I made in this video is available as a free download. You can find the link in the description to this video. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. It's free and you'll be notified whenever I make one of these videos. Also, I now have a Patreon. If you've been enjoying what I do, either on the video side or the work I do on Decent Sampler, joining the Patreon is a great way to show support. There's only one tier and you get a free sample library at the end of each month. See you soon.